Well, in this design series video, we're now in the engine bay and there's a lot to see. So we'll get on with it and I'll let my other self explain a few things. Well, <laughs> I'm carrying on, but it's, it gets, it gets your, it certainly gets your, uh, your brain cells clicking over this. Cause I've only shown you the top part yet in the, uh, in our little engine room. Uh, I've not even got to where the engine is and a few other bits and pieces. <laughs> uh, I knew this one would be a, uh, something what, uh, took a while cause we've got that much going on. So, um, what we'll do now, I've showed you the top part. Now we'll show you how everything comes apart, what we've got, and then we'll show you some details in the engine bay itself, cause there is quite a lot to see. So we'll get on with that now and see how we come out of it at the end. <laughs> so, we carry on. Now, what this is, is soundproofing. Uh, which uh, we've got underneath all our uh, engine area and also to make it even more soundproof just in there there's lead lining as well so it really is a good sound deadener and that's where the batteries are at so just before I do take things to bits I'll just show you our choice of batteries now these are our batteries uh, we chose gel batteries and these are dual purpose um, and they, we've got six at the back 115 amp each and two at the front uh, again they're 115 amp each for the bow thruster um, we chose these because they are long lasting and they're, they're really good value um, we thought long and heard about lithium but there is no way on this earth that lithium is worth the money at the moment. It will happen, but at the moment, the expense of lithium is just, it just doesn't seem warranted. And we are more than happy with these batteries because we can still get, um, we'll get two and a half to three days mowed up without needing to turn anything on. And uh, I think that's good enough because the other thing is you always have to put your engine on or use some sort of energy whether it's gas or diesel for hot water but uh, it definitely will you know in the future lithium will become more a reasonably priced but uh, for now we are more than happy with having dual purpose gel batteries and of course wired up correctly as well that makes a huge difference with a good battery management system So, a very important thing on any boat is accessibility to your engine and other components. And in this little bit, I'll show you how everything comes apart so you've got full access. Now we've took the, uh, the top off, or part of the top. And if you notice as well, Beta Marine engines are normally green but uh, Steve Hudson who built our boat, he had some buying power he did uh, and he had his engines painted like a silver colour, silvery grey um, instead of the normal green. Now I have no idea why but that's what he did. So it just sets his, uh, his beta engines out differently to, uh, to the normal. Now we've took the um, the front section off and you've got access to a lot of things here now you may also notice before I tell this this is just a tip we've got uh, powder here it's talcum powder this what you can see what's around and you put these you put that on these on your on your fan belts uh, to stop them slipping at any time so you just do it on and then 
every now and then I'll give that a tidy up but that's what you see is powder from uh, just talcum powder basically now a few things different here I'll get down and show you right if you look here now we have got one alternator there that's 50 amp and 175 amp uh, alternator there so them two now they charge our batteries uh, and do very well particularly that one with it being 175 amp that one so they charge up quite quickly also on uh, and not many will have this on everything we've got here we've got something these things the run free pulleys and that takes stress off everything when the engine stops instead of it just a sudden clunk and it stopped they still spin round and just gently stop and uh, that'll lengthen the life of the the engine and all this system as well and we also down here had aluminium pulleys fitted into the cast iron um, if we that's a, a little bit of an adapted kit that as well uh, what we had done and here that there is our engine generator and that runs at 3.5 kilowatts so what happens is if I look up here now if you look up there I'm not taking it apart because there's, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff behind there but in that cupboard we have all the control system for it and that works with the master bolt so all we do just move up again apologies for <laughs> moving around a bit but the generator comes in when that button is pressed there that on off button there and it just clicks on green when the generator's on so that'll be using three and a half kilowatts at that point which can run more or less anything on a boat it could even you know it could run a, a, a dryer you know it runs washing machines no problems we've got microwaves we've got the uh, Nespresso coffee makers and all that and it just runs brilliantly off that so we've got three sources on the engine two alternators and an engine driven generator still plenty more to see <laughs> right if you see now we've got uh, full access to the engine and its components and it's quite easy access to everything else as well because um, we've still not finished taking bits apart yet <laughs> well, a couple of things I just want to show you first is at the back can you see that insulated thing at the back if you look closely that is a big hospital silencer and that gets rid of your exhaust noise which is one of the main things you hear on a narrowboat engine it's a series of baffles inside and no no noise comes out of the exhaust so you couple that with the uh, soundproofing and the hospital silencer and then your engine is very quiet and it's not finished there either because down there as well if I can just look closely to uh, to show you down there we've got something now if I can get into it for you and you can see there you are that is a centre flex now the centre flex stops vibration it stops vibration and noise and it removes any of the that's the shaft it removes any noise coming from that into the boat and also if the propeller or anything hits anything all that uh, clunking and everything doesn't go through into the gearbox like it could do and damage things that suppresses or gives a good you know it tries its best to suppress 
and uh, I would have one of them on any board then. So that is a centre flex. And we've still got quite a bit to show you yet. I've not quite got it date yet. <laughs> so I'll get on to a few more things now. Um, servicing is quite easy, but I've given up doing it now and I'll let somebody else do it. But I can pass you some advice on here. Um, as we come back down here, you've got this is the fuel down here, fuel filter, and that's the primer, and that's the air filter there, just like on a car. There. But you can you take that off and just replace it and then prime it through by pressing that. Now, underneath here as well, you can see. I don't know whether you can see that, so I'll. Uh, well, I'll just. See. I was going to say I was go put a torch on there for you, but oh yeah, I've got one. Hold a sec. Here we are. Under here, that's the oil filter. Now, oil filters and things. Never. This is a bit of advice. I mean, they're easy enough to change, but if you've only got one and something goes wrong, panic stations. So, the only advice I can give, don't do it in stupid places. That is without a shadow of a doubt. Oil change in a nice, easy place and never rush it. Same with the fuel filter. If something goes wrong, you're causing problems or can cause problems for other people, and it's quite silly to uh, to rush things like that. So that's the engine for now, and obviously that's just where we put our top up, our antifreeze, and that in there, just like a, a normal engine. But I've still got a few things to show you yet, and we better get on with it. This is what I would deem a narrow boat essential. <laughs> um, what it is, is diesel fuel now, you've got to be careful where you get it from. Um, some people are just picking up anywhere, farmers fields etc and they get the stuff from the um, and then there's the marinas and uh, dedicated places which are quite, uh, you know, are more reliable. But not complete, you know, it's not, you can't, you know, you can still get uh, fuel what's, uh, what's not at its best. But as a narrow boater, all I can say, make certain that any red diesel you get is what they call fame free. Now fame, I'll have to read this because I can never remember the name. But it stands for, and I should have had my glasses here. Fatty acid methyl ester. In effect, it's biodiesel what's put into fuel as well. Now, biodiesel is not good because in your tank, if you have it for any length of time, it deteriorates and absorbs water as well. So that's if it's not fame free and you're destined to have problems eventually if you keep using a fuel like that. Now what happens then, if you have anything like that, because if you get water, because the other aspect of this as well, and this is why it's important to know these things, is your fuel tank, particularly over winter, your diesel fuel tank, um, make certain it's topped up to the maximum. Because what happens is, if it's not, and you've got this earth space, um, it fills up full of condensation and the condensation drips to the bottom of the fuel tank and it just separates from the fuel so it, it, it starts to fill up and this encourages diesel bug now diesel bug is you, you don't want to get that uh, it's like a slime it's fungicide and all that what starts to develop and it's like a living 
it's a horrible gungy gungy material and if you're not careful it'll work its way into your engine your fuel lines all your injectors and that'll start to block and your engine will feel sluggish and then perhaps pack in and then you've got major surgery then ranging from getting a company in to charge you quite a bit of money to clean out all your um, you know all your uh, fuel lines and everything and replace what bits are needed to replace and that can get very expensive or worst case scenario you need another engine so you need to avoid diesel bug now what I'm going to show you is uh, something we came across uh, a few years ago which has proved to be excellent and what it is it's called a fuel decontaminator uh, the number is FGD 100 and if I'm not mistaken now there's an FGD 1120 and that also that has an alarm on it as well and you'll see in the in the uh, in the vlog when it continues shortly what this is it's the only one as well what uh, passes the certificate because it's all fireproof and everything instead of your normal conventional uh, water filter uh, what uh, what you have on the boat uh, which is quite it, it does its job but you, it's quite basic and it can't stop but it doesn't stop all your your gunge and that flying around it, it it's uh, it's what most narrow boats have but it's it's very basic uh, what we came across with this decontaminator was a very clever thing it's the, like I say what I was saying it's clear at the bottom so you can actually see the fuel uh, which is always very handy uh, and within it is a filter which you can always clean out as well so the claim to it is it will stop diesel bug because this filter it's very 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 tiny microns it is it's I can't remember the number but this filter stops any gunge if you're un unlucky enough to get going into your engine it actually stops it um, and also if you've got water it actually goes to the bottom of this and you can see it and there's a little tap at the bottom and you can just let the water out so you get rid of the water easy because you can see it and with the alarm now that's got even better because it'll warn you if there's water so in effect it's a small fuel polishing system and it's not a fortune and it's worth it because if you get that diesel <laughs> that diesel bug in your system boy oh boy problem after problem replacing filters for days on end because they keep blocking up everything like that can happen so we'll move on to that now and uh, hopefully you'll have an understanding of it and i'll put a few diagrams on as well well just uh, further down next to the engine is well our fuel quality of fuel is uh it made certain it's, it, you know they say fuel is next to godliness for your boats well this system here back there is a fuel guard fgd 100 it's a big mouthful like it's a diesel decontaminator and water separator and all that happens is this is legal this one it's the only one what's legal this uh, see-through base where you can see the fuel it's got a filter inside which you can clean and it lasts as long as you want you just you know clean it all up when it gets dirty or if it gets dirty if water comes in or little bits the little bits stay on the filter and the water goes to the bottom and then if you look around there you can drain it all off just take the plug out the bottom and drain the water off not too bad to do that but even better this is a type of fuel polisher now because it's got the fuel guard and also a 12 volt pump 
so it's continually pumping round and polishing the fuel so I minimise the risk of getting contamination and uh, that's one thing I would recommend for anybody so that's the fuel guard FGD 100 with 12 volt pump <laughs> now if I can get to show you this I'll, try, I'll put some light on as well so you can get this Now under here, that's our clarifier, but again, slightly different. It's from a company called Sigma, fully insulated, but the bottom is shaped, it's flat and not round, so it just sits nicely. And these go with the Aldi uh, compact central heating systems, because you can't use uh, copper pipe and that with the with them systems uh, and this is part of the kit it also includes dual coils so you get heat off the engine and also off the central heating and an immersion heater so if you think about it that's the reason why I've gone through them all now we've got three forms of heat for warmth and four forms of hot water. So we've got the fire, the central heating boiler, then we've got the immersion heater, the central heating boiler for hot water, and also that little electric um, coil what's in the uh, in the comfort boiler. And you say, hold on a minute, that's not four and three, that's three and two. Well I'll show you something now what I think is stunning and if you use your boat regularly throughout the seasons and that it's, everybody should have one so before we continue um, if you're a narrow boater who uses your boat and what I mean by that in all seasons not just in the nice hot weather the next thing I'm going to show you I wouldn't do without it's been it's just been absolutely fabulous for us um, and it uh, it's it's free that's the other thing it's free what we're going to talk about but we're going to talk about a product what gives you free central heating when your boat's going along so whether it's it and it's temperature control because we have thermostats and that but we can if it's a bit chilly and we're going along we can switch it on if it's cold, get the thermostat up. We'll have blasting hot radiators, not costing us a penny. Uh, and it's a stunning little bit of kit. We don't, when we're cruising in winter, we don't have the fire on, we have the central heating on, but we're not using any, or paying for any fuel. It, it's very clever what it does. The other thing it does as well, is for those who you're on the rivers and you can use you know the boat can be run and you're going very quite heavy with the revs sometimes it can overeat the engine depending how it's designed this can cool the engine down as well when it's going along uh, because it of the way it transfers heat so the next one if you're a boater who boats in all weathers you know like I said this is definitely an, an essential now just before I go like you must always remember this all the time this is our you know all these things what we've talked about through this design series uh, and we've still got a few more to come they're our choices uh, built on experience you know I'm, I'm just saying this is why we do it so it, I know everybody has different ideas but all this is about is showing you things what have worked on our boat. And if you want to utilise them, well and good. If you don't, doesn't matter. You might not even like them. But it's just our bits and pieces, what we've, you know, the things you pick up over years of boating. This is what we're trying to show you. So now, on with another narrow boat essential, in our opinion. <laughs> Well, like I say, I've took that 
top off as well again it's uh, it's got the soundproofing underneath but if you go down here now and particularly look at that device first that little silver thing well that silver thing is known as an heat exchanger and that works wonders and I've installed this I retrofitted this myself because uh, my backgrounds from years ago was uh, was as part of an eating engine here. Well, it was a while ago, but you don't forget. And I've piped all this in, and it's quite clever. I've also, because they don't have these much, <laughs> and it's such a simple thing, and get rid of her. I've put a domestic uh, bleed vent on here. And I use that there with the red handle. I use that as a balancing valve for making certain the water goes the easiest routes and you can just shut it or open it accordingly. But what this does, when your engine's on, it provides free central heating, you get red hot radiators, and also it does the hot water. So it's a nifty bit of kit this and all that happens is I've put it into the central heating system and this is split in the middle this is split in the middle and it'll have all like little coils of you know for heat transfer on each side and the heat just transfers over as the engine gets hot the heat just transfers to the other side you put your central heating pump on which in our case we're lucky enough it's a very very low amp uh, pump on a, an oldie system and the water works its way through now I'll show you from underneath as well and you can see just how small it is but it's a stunning bit of kit this so we've come down here now just to show you a bit closer uh, that again is the just how small that heat exchanger is uh, and it does its business in both the hot water and, and the CH in the boat with just the uh, pump going and because we cruise in all weathers, we're not just for weather cruisers we have that on quite a lot so for now I've shown you as much as I can in here <laughs> it took ages to give me an headache <laughs> but uh, I hope you understand how how much you can have in an engine room and the differences we've got in it, you know, than the norm but how easy it makes boating when you've got everything at hand like this so I hope you've enjoyed it uh, that has been an hard one for me <laughs> but I do hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next vlog see you all, ta -ra.